us today at Around the Peninsula. I'm Maria Serreo. I am here today at the Palos Verdes Golf Club with the Palos Verdes Peninsula Chamber of Commerce to welcome all four mayors from the Palos Verdes Peninsula right here to talk to the business community. This gives them a chance to exchange ideas and have a meaningful conversation. So let's hear from the four mayors. Can you tell us why it's so important for the four mayors to do events like this? Well, first of all, the, the Chamber of Commerce and the businesses that are on the peninsula are what make things happen here. And, um, you know, obviously it's important for jobs and the community. And I think it's also important for the business community to be here to hear what's going on in all four cities because obviously the things that happen here affect all of their businesses. What is your message today? Well, my message, of course, is that Rancho Palos Verdes, although it has many big, big issues we're dealing with, uh, the city is still doing well. A lot of great things have happened, and I want to highlight some of those things that have happened, like the Ladera Linda Community Center, of course, the 50th anniversary that we uh, had a celebration for, and, and also the fact that our city staff and, and the team that are working with the city are in good spirits, even though they've been working very, very hard to help the residents in the Portuguese Ben Landslide area. Lastly, for people that don't know, I know you guys get together once a month to do like a mayor's, is it a mayor's lunch or a mayor's breakfast? Yeah, we do. I mean, I think that's uh, an important thing. And, and, you know, a lot of times when you're outside of the Palos Verdes Peninsula, when you talk to people, they say, oh, you're from Palos Verdes. And I think even the four mayors feel that way, that we're really, even though we're four cities, we're one peninsula and all the things that all of us do affect each other and so we want to work together i want to hear what the other three cities are doing what they're up to and how we can help them and so i think that's critical that we keep that communication going well i think one of the things is we really are you know, even though we are four different cities on the peninsula we really are one community and so every time we have an opportunity to bring all four cities together i think it's important and i think it's important to reach out to our business community and our communities in general and share what's going on in the city so that everyone understands what are our priorities, what have we been accomplishing, and really just, it's always great just to bring people together. What is your message today to the community? Uh, my message today is that we, um, that there's a lot going on in the city of Palos Verdes Estates. We've accomplished a lot. We've got a plan for moving forward. We have some challenges and we're facing them head on. Lastly, when you think about the four mayors being on one hill, four cities, um, how do you like to collaborate with the other mayors, even away from you know, things like this? Well, we do have a monthly mayor's lunch where we sit down and a lot of that social because we, you know, if you know each other, if you break bread together, then you really do develop those relationships. But at those times, we also talk about different challenges that we have so we can learn from each other and we can find where are there are opportunities for us to collaborate. You know, one of the areas we've collaborated on is around wildfire prevention and the wildfire cameras that RPV took the lead on and worked with Elmer Tsuchi to get funding for. But it's really an opportunity for us to uh, leverage each other's capabilities and create something that benefits all. I believe an event like this is important because this is the only chance our businesses and our residents can hear about what the four communities are doing together. They can come to the council meetings individually and things like that, but this is the only place I know of where you can hear all four of us at the same time. And I know privately you all meet once a month. Um, a lot of the mayors have said that it's really helpful to have that collaboration. Right. We do meet once a month, and in addition to that meeting that we've been having for years, we've now started another focus group that also meets once a month, and I believe that there's going to be even more opportunities for us to work together, just the, the mayors, on different action items and things that we might want to bring to our councils. And then what is your message today to the community? What do you, what do you hope to tell them? Well, we have a lot of things in common, even though we're separate cities, 
hang in there. We've got some challenges in front of us, but I think we work together. We understand the urgency of what's out there, and we're all trying to address the issues to the best of everybody's abilities. I think one of the things that's really unique about the peninsula is that our councils truly are collaborative and we work well together and this is an event where, where it's highlighted how the community operates as one and it's wonderful that we each have our jurisdictions and we all have the areas in which we contribute but coming together is really an illustration of how we work and the the way that safety or hazards happen, they don't stop at a line because PVE ends and RHE starts or, and so we work that way as well. We don't just stop and so what you'll see today is really emblematic of how we work and I, the other mayors are dear friends as well. You'll notice our, the way that we interact with one another and another piece that really goes unsaid is how close and how well our city managers work together and that is such an amazing resource. We saw it during COVID, how we all came together to make things happen quickly, and we continue to see it throughout the peninsula. So it's very exciting to be here. I know in addition to that, you all meet once a month to get together. What is that collaborative session like? Lots of laughs, uh, highly respectful, and we challenge one another. We use each other as sounding boards. We elevate our thinking. We bring ideas that we perhaps may not have thought, and then we go back to our councils to share. So that's a critical piece of not just relationship creation, but also how can we be better at our jobs? And I mean, as you know, we all choose to volunteer of our time. And while we may be doing and trying our best, we can always improve and having the other voices or hey have you guys faced this problem what did you do we did three decades ago or we're doing it now we're able to come together and really elevate the way that we choose to serve our communities lastly what is your message here today I think it's one of great inspiration and hope for Rolling Hills Estates we have a lot going on and yet our community feels and looks like the timeless place that it is and so uh, our message is we're growing we're thriving and we're respectfully preserving what we've built over the last six decades Eileen tell us why this is so important for the chamber to do this with the four mayor great question Maria the chamber is the heart of the community we cover the entire peninsula as well as businesses across the South Bay and so the importance of collaborating effectively with our cities is very, very meaningful because I think we learned during the pandemic that when businesses and our local government work together, we can be a very powerful voice and an impactful force to government at the county, state, and federal levels. You can also tell by the room is full, the businesses really appreciate this opportunity. Absolutely, we are sold out. This is the second year we've done this event. We are super excited and we are so honored to have the mayors of all four peninsula cities here, as well as many other elected officials and business leaders. Is there a message that the chamber wants the business community to know? I think it would be great for the uh, community to know that the chamber and our businesses greatly appreciate the support of our residents. Um, we talk about the importance of supporting our local businesses. We all believe in the importance of local control and whether it's for our businesses that want to have, they want to be left alone by Sacramento to run their businesses and our cities that want to be left alone by Sacramento and control their own zoning. We are all on the same side and fighting to keep the peninsula and the South Bay um, locally controlled. And it seems like you have a great group of mayors right now, too, that really want to work together to get things done. Absolutely. And as I said, I think there was a real turning point back in April of 2020, like literally three weeks after the lockdown, when the chamber collaborated with all four cities and put together a blueprint for reopening. And that actually made a difference at the county level. And so I think that was a really good moment in time for us to all learn that when we collaborate and work together our businesses and our cities we can have even greater impact it's amazing to work with the other three mayors of the peninsula i know a lot of you when you travel you probably you tell people where you're from and you probably just say i'm from palace Verdes, because you know a lot of times we just think of all four cities as one big city but all four of us are very unique and so 
Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about many of the challenges that you've had, and I know you've had a fire hose of information, so I'll try to keep it somewhat light and get through it quickly, and I know it lets you guys get on with your day. And then I, I would also be remiss to not be thanking Eileen and the entire Palisades East Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. I think you remember I was one of the first elected officials back in 2020 as mayor back then to get COVID. So one of the things we're doing on Western Avenue, we, we never forget about our, our eastern part of our city. Of course, you always see the ocean part of our city and you hear about the landslide, but Rancho Palos Verdes is the largest of the four cities on the peninsula. We do wrap all the way around the peninsula. We uh, neighbor San Pedro. Our border is basically Western Avenue. On Western Avenue, uh, we just decided to do a storefront, uh, storefront facade grant so that if you're a business owner that has something on Western Avenue, I think we have a matching type grant where if you want to upgrade your storefront, you could do so. If you're familiar with the Western Plaza, Western Plaza where uh, I think O'Reilly's Auto Store is, there, the developer there is going to be doing a full upgrade of that property. There's going to be a Habit Burger for those of you that like Habit Burgers. All right, give it up for Habit Burger. Uh, a California fish grill and an urban cafe, among other things. But the great thing is, is that uh, people are investing in our city. Uh, we want to make sure that our city is very uh, business friendly. We always have, if you hear our staff talk. And it's funny because on this particular project, our staff, like a lot of times when you do developments, uh, and I'm in the business of doing developments with architects and developers, you know, you got to wait a long time for plan check and it takes sometimes years to get things approved. Well, I guess the developer hadn't contacted the city in a couple of weeks, so our staff actually reached out to them and said, hey, what can we do to help you keep moving this thing along? That's unheard of. And so we're very proud to be business friendly. Um, a few years ago, we actually eliminated all home-based business taxes for if you're running your business in our city, you don't have to pay a business tax in our city. We wanted to encourage people to not have to drive and do their business from their home. And there's a lot of businesses that are in Rancho Palos. Actually, a lot of people do a lot of home-based businesses. There's probably people here that have home-based businesses. The landslide initially, it was an ancient landslide. It was reactivated back in 1956. Um, the land movement that's happening now is the same that it was back in 1956. It's, it's never moved like this since that time. Uh, we have fortunately were able to control it for so many years. Of course, if you're in the Portuguese Bend, people there got to, they learned how to live with it, even though those properties were moving feet per year. But some of the earlier areas like Seaview and, and uh, uh, some of those other areas, they, they were only moving in inches per year or less. So what's happening now, it's doubled in size, the landslide. Um, and if you didn't know, it's called a complex landslide. So there's actually five landslides. Four of them are in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and one is unfortunately in the city of Rolling Hills. So that's what Leo was talking about, what we share. Right now what's happening is there's areas within the Portuguese Bend that are moving about nine inches per week, which those of you that are quick with math is more than 30 foot per year. So homes and properties are moving that much. And there's 400 homes in the landslide area, just so you know. Our city has probably more than 12,000 home structures, so it's not the entire city of Rancho Palos Verdes. We all know that, but you know, if you're listening to the news in Florida or something, you're going to think the whole entire hill is going in. I mean, fortunately, it's, it's only 400 homes. Unfortunately, it's 400 homes. So, um, and that's caused us to close eight miles of our trails. So if you drive up and you try to do the trails off of Crenshaw, you're not going to have any luck. All those trails are closed. The reason they're closed is because there's fissures. Some of those fissures are 20, 30, 40, 50 feet deep, three, four, five feet wide. They're really dangerous. So we cannot let people up in those. And we're going to do whatever we can to slow the rate of this landslide and then start to repair and, and op reopen things like the trails. Last night at our city council meeting, we approved two emergency hydro augers. These are basically quarter mile long uh, drills. Uh, we're basically drilling five different uh, drill holes in horizontally into the ground and then putting in perforated pipes so that water that's under pressure comes out. There'll be one down near the beach and there'll be one at the upper part of the landslide. The one at the upper part of the landslide is basically taking water out of the landslide so that you take the weight out and the one down at the bottom is re removing that water so because what happens is the bentonite, which is a slip plane actually, it's kind of like an ice ho or air hockey game when you turn on the machine and the puck comes up same thing with the water. When the water comes up, it actually pushes the bottom part of the landslide up and makes it so that there's less friction. So that's why you have all this movement. 
We're going to start trying to draw down that water. We are moving as fast as we can, and I, I think the county, the state, the federal government, we, we've, you know we've gotten everyone involved, and everyone, it's all hands on deck, Cal Water, all the utility companies. Everyone has done an amazing job, and so we can't thank people enough. Um, we believe that within two weeks, the first test boring uh, holes go in. These are basically uh, holes where we're going to find out exactly the geology of what's going on before we start doing the actual work. And then shortly thereafter, we're going to start doing that. That's $9 million of our city is going to commit to do these two uh, hydro auger wells. Uh, unfortunately, Wayfarers Chapel had to close. Um, the building itself didn't get red tagged, but it's such a delicate structure. Our city is going to do whatever we can to make sure that Wayfarer stays in Rancho Palos Verdes. It's also been an honor to be mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes and just be on the city council. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of issues, but more importantly, we have a lot of amazing people. We always welcome people to our city. Uh, we love our fellow our neighbors. Uh, they're awesome. And so thank you for everything you guys do and have a great day. You know, we like any business or any other city, we have our challenges, and I'm going to just touch upon uh, a handful of them. The first is around local control of housing density. Right? That's a city, you talk about legislative need and legislative action. That's definitely an area that we are working on. We have our housing element is open for public comment right now, and it will be going to the uh, Planning Commission May 21st, and then coming to Council uh, we anticipate in May and June for approval and submission to HCD. We've been working with HCD uh, on a regular basis. It's, it's just been great watching staff and the, develop, and the relationship they've developed with HCD. HCD is the group that has total authority on whether or not to certify a housing element. So they, they wield a lot of power and the fact that we've been able to develop that relationship is wonderful. Concurrent with that, we've just launched an effort to develop objective design and development standards. And what this will allow us to do is to put um, some, I'm trying to think of a, a positive word, but I don't really have one. So I'm going to say some guardrails on the type of development that happens so that it is consistent with the city character and with what our residents want. So our Fire abatement contract went up 300%, added another million dollars. That's a $1.5 million contract. It's not cheap to take care of open space and parkland, which is really important to our residents. Our landscape maintenance contract also added over a million dollars to our budget. That's another $1.5 million budget. These, these all add up. Because of our historical uh, having a fire department, which we then ended up transitioning to LA County Fire, and having our own police department means that, that brings with it significant pension responsibility. And so our unfunded accrued liability cost this year is about 1.5 million, and in a few years that will go up to 2 million. So we've got a lot of cost pressures in the city. We're looking at our contracts. We're trying to manage them. There are things we can control and things that we can't control, which then leads me to revenue. Okay, we're different from the other cities. You know, and you, you all in business, Right. We don't have retail and commercial activities like the other cities have. So 75% of our budget or of our revenue comes from taxes, some form of taxes. And, and with that, we've historically had a parcel tax. Okay, And so we've got one that's going to sunset in 2027. It brings in $5 million. It's roughly 23, right? Can't say roughly and then say 23, but it's roughly 23% of our revenue. And so we're currently working on a replacement. We've brought in a consultant. They did some initial polling, and we are getting ready to launch some community engagement to have a conversation with residents around what our cost pressures are, what our revenue situation is, what level of services they want, so that they can then help us, uh, or basically decide um, you know, what's, um, what the city's going to look like in the future. We've had staffing turnover and some vacancies. We've got our uh, interim city manager, Kerry Kelman, here with me. We've got executive recruitment going on with uh, Bob Murray and Associates for a city clerk that we're hoping to close soon. We've got a recruitment for a police chief interviews next week. We're hoping to close that soon. 
and then we just launched a search for a finance director. And then internally, Kerry, um, with one of his many hats that he's wearing, is also doing a search for an HR analyst and a management analyst. So if you know anyone that has any of these skills, I mean, I, I mean it's great to hire locally, right? That's what's great. Our, we currently have a, a part-time HR person who's helping us to do the recruitment for the HR analyst. She used to be a PBE resident. And then finally, um, we've got water issues. We've got raising groundwater. You know, any of you that have spent any time in Malaga Cove, you know, you've seen it. Um, we're not experiencing any land movement yet, um, and I'm hoping to keep it that way. Um, but we are seeing this inundation of groundwater, and we're putting in place temporary measures. The city's invested uh, at, to date 200 grand trying to understand the scope and the source of this so that we can identify longer term solutions. And that's something, too, that actually um, the, the mayors have started talking about, you know, like wildfire, right? We put in the wildfire cameras because fire doesn't stop at a city border. Such friendly faces here. Thank you so much for having us. Um, all of this that you see, by the way, is organic and natural. The four of us are friends. We have high regard and respect for one another. Our city managers work very well together. And so events like this are really important because our community isn't four separate cities. We are all one united peninsula. And so hopefully this is what you feel and experience this morning. Uh, while we each have separate jurisdictions that are slightly different, we all work together. and. As a businesswoman, I want to thank the Chamber because in my day-to-day -day and in the team that I support and the company that I lead, uh, business is really important. And so thank you. Uh, I had the privilege of being mayor in 2020, and I, I do want to give a big, huge thank you to Eileen because the way that we all came together during that time to help support businesses, um, it was heart-wrenching to lose some. It was triumphant when some succeeded in, in a variety of ways. and so. Uh, it's so nice to be back here when uh, ideally we're all thriving. I have the privilege of serving as mayor for the beautiful city of Rolling Hills Estates. And if you know anything about us, we really try to preserve our equestrian heritage and, and make life great for our residents, our visitors, and our business community. So I'll go through a couple of things at, um, with some updates. Uh, first, to start with public safety. Um, as you know, we had the privilege of welcoming a new captain to Lomita Station. If you've never met Kimberly Guerrero, please do. She's phenomenal. Uh, we work very closely with the Lomita Sheriff Station, and I know crime has been top of mind and know that we are doing lots of things, some that we talk about publicly, some that we don't, to do pri crime prevention as well as uh, to help in, in a variety of ways. Uh, one of the systems that we have in place is our ALPR system. Those are the cameras that are strategically placed across the peninsula. They have been very successful and effective. Uh, oftentimes you will see a sheriff's deputy with a pullover car. Most of the time that has been something that's been flashed. They've apprehended sus suspects and done it all quietly. Uh, we get the reports, but oftentimes our residents or the wider peninsula is not aware of what's happened. Those are very effective tools. We are upgrading some of those systems with newer technology because it is fast uh, changing. And of course, we all sit, sit on the peninsula uh, regional law committee. So we work together very collaboratively with that. Uh, we're also working on a drywall project that's going to help with PV Drive East to capture and retain stormwater. Um, for those of you who want to know about stormwater, we could talk for the next 48 days and you probably still wouldn't know all we're doing about stormwater, but just know that we are trying to address that and, and mitigate any containment into the Machado Lake or any other uh, drain areas that we're responsible for. We're also moving forward with a new park, yay, at the end of PV Drive East and PV Drive North. So uh, Fenders Park, as it will be known, that's a tribute to our first uh, city council and the founders of our city. It will be a small parkette. It'll have a couple of things for um, resting and benches as well as some playground equipment. So that should come later this summer. This is really something that is a labor of love. We choose the things that we give our time to and I am so grateful that this is the thing that I've given lots of my time to. I appreciate the time to be here and the invitation. We may be separate cities, 
<clears throat> excuse me, but we share many things. Our history, the natural beauty of the peninsula, similar topographies and geographical conditions, and the special quote unquote living on the hill feeling and lifestyle that each city works so hard to preserve. We also share many of the same challenges and I believe it's important for our constituents, constituents and businesses to know how closely the cities work together to address those challenges. And this event is the only place I know of where that can take place. This is the second of these meetings and we're hearing today about some of the things that have changed since our meeting last year. For Rolling Hills, one of the major changes has been hiring our new city manager, Karina Benales. She's a new city manager, new in the title, let alone into Rolling Hills. Karina, if you just stand up so people can see you. Thank you. And, and in the tradition of all of our communities working together, uh, Karina has a solid familiarity and appreciation for the peninsula, working most recently for RPV and previously for PVE. We're pleased to have her on our team and we're keeping her very, very busy. We continue to partner with the LA sheriffs at Lameda Station regarding the burglaries and crime convention and exploring the possibility of reviving the Rolling Hills Volunteers on, Contr Volunteers on Patrol program that disbanded during the COVID restrictions. Um, and on the issue of equine safety, we are coordinating the development of a designated emergency notification system for horse owners, providing information specific to their needs that will help them deal with how much longer it takes to deal with having to get a horse out of the community if you have to. And we have about 80 horses, I think, in, just in Rolling Hills, let alone how many you have in RPD and Rolling Hills Estates. Um, kind of the gorilla in the room, uh, land movement. Um, Rolling Hills is situated at the top of the peninsula and is bordered on all sides by RPV and Rolling Hills Estates. The terrain is laced with canyons and is quite steep in many areas. Lot sizes are very large and development standards place restrictions on the amount of lot and pad coverages and require generous amounts of open space on every property. We don't have any public parks. Practically every piece of property we have is like a park. In closing, although Rolling Hills is small, we have no commercial zoning or businesses, and sometimes we can be perceived as isolated. We are actually quite involved with all the issues on the peninsula and strive to be good neighbors. As demonstrated today, we actively work with the other cities. We patron, bless you. We patronize local businesses, and many of our residents are among the most generous supporters of peninsula organizations and treasure, treasures, including our two great hospitals, Providence Little Company and Torrance Memorial, the PD Library District, Peninsula Education Foundation, South Coast Botanic Gardens, Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, the Norris Theater, just to name a few. And a known to many, to help with fire safety, since 2019, the City of Rolling Hills provided annual funding to the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy for weed abatement, acacia removal, and other vegetation management actions, totaling over $350,000. In a city with about a $5 million a year budget, that's a lot of money for us. Uh, we hope we're gonna have funds to continue that in next year's budget. I want to thank all my fellow elected officials, the city staffs, our local businesses, and residents for being active partners and working collaboratively to address all of our challenge and to keep our cities the special places we love. Hang in there. It's going to be a tough year, but we're going to make it. And that will do it for today's show. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.